The following program is sponsored by the Today's Home Remodeler Television Network. Welcome to today's Home Remodeler. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, well, we're looking at some beautiful landscape options for your home. We'll begin by meeting with Craig Kittleson from Kittleson Landscape. We'll show how his design team formulates a project from paper to a three-dimensional movie that helps visualize what a new landscape is going to look like. Next, we'll head to a job site and meet up with project manager Kurt Zimple. He'll explain how brick patios are installed and showcase a beautiful outdoor living space. And finally, we'll finish up today's program at a couple of lakefront landscapes to see what's possible and also what's permitted along a lakeshore here in southern Wisconsin. So we have a lot to cover today, and we'll get started right after these messages. Like most quality remodeling projects, landscaping begins with a good design. So let's begin today's program with Craig Kittleson and his team of designers at Kittleson Landscape as they show how a landscape design gets started. So this is a fire pit area here and this is going to be an upper area seating level. Boy, there are just so many different products and elements that go into a properly laid out landscape design that it's pretty apparent why you want to work with a professional company, but let's say that I am a homeowner, I have an aging landscape design, I want to revitalize it. How do I get the process started? Call a professional first. What we'll do is come out to your place, look around your house, see the things and the needs that you want, listen to what your lifestyle is and the things that are important to you. We're very good listeners, and that is the number one thing, to get a good design on paper. Seems to me you want to work with a professional that cares about your project, I mean, steps into your shoes, really becomes part of your family. Makes the whole process so much more fun, all the way through from the design, up through the doing, and actually enjoying the end result. I like that, it's fun, because it's probably not only fun for the homeowners, but it's gonna be a better end result if it's fun for you, and you get to see all the different homes out there, all the different landscapes, and all the beautiful end results you can create, because one thing I've seen in the landscape business is it keeps evolving and there's more products and really your imagination is your limitation when it comes to that. And our expertise can help narrow some of those choices down. We try to use products that work good for your situation. So that makes it a little bit easier for you. And with landscape design projects, you're really talking about transforming the look of a property. But that can be a big hurdle because I know in my case, I have a hard time visualizing an end result before the project starts. How can you assist a homeowner with fears of that, kind of set them at ease? Sure. A lot of times we'll start out with a nice single dimensional plan to get things set up so we know the spaces we're working with. But the neat thing is we can take this and grow it right into a three dimensional plan with a CAD system that we offer. Wow, that does help a lot. This is a picture of the house that we're actually working on here. And if you think this looks good, you should see when we bring it into a computer and actually have a movie and you can fly around and look at your design. Wait a minute, you can actually take a picture of my house, put it not only three-dimensionally on paper, but into a CAD program so I can get a fly around of the house and really see the end result before you even start? Scott and Jane here are amazing with that program. So you actually have a design staff that works with the homeowners and they can I just can't get over that. Help visualize because that's ultimately the peace of mind that'll set everybody at ease and have fun with this whole entire process. It really helps you look at your house and what it's going to look like before one shovel hits the ground. Well, that's great advice. Work with a professional landscaper who's going to listen, take uh, you know pride in what they're doing for you, work around your wants, needs, and desires, but being able to show me the end result before it starts. That's awesome. What do you have in store for us today so we can actually get out on site and see what your crews are up to? I have got a very nice house out in the country, a beautiful view, and I'd like to have Kirk show you that job. Awesome. And also, I'd like to hook up with you later. I've got a really neat lakeside property I'd like to show you. Well, fantastic. It's been great so far. Can't wait to see you a little later in the show. Sounds good.
Well, Kirk, looks like you and your crew are well on your way to creating a beautiful outdoor living environment. And just standing here looking out, I can see why the homeowners are doing it. Why wouldn't you want to live out here and take advantage of these beautiful views? Definitely. It's beautiful out here. Now, why ultimately did they contact your company? Well, what they were looking for is to have more outdoor living area. Before, they just had a patio, which they weren't able to entertain the whole family. So they wanted to divide it up in some different living areas with an upper area, a lower area. They wanted to do an exposure for the basement. This is actually the level of the grade was all the way around. They wanted to expose the basement and include some windows. So you guys did an awful lot of excavating here. And are you finding this is a trend? People want to bring the outdoors in, the indoors out so that they can enjoy it? Because as I said, with a site like this, you don't find too many like it in Dane County, and why not take advantage of it? Definitely. A lot of the customers that I talk to are trying to stay in the house that they're in and including an outdoor living area so they can spend more time with the family. That's kind of been the big trend we've been seeing. So we've had a lot of these projects. It must be fun for you and your guys to come out here and really transform a mundane landscape into something so functional and beautiful. Oh, it's great. We take before pictures, after pictures, and just the transformation is awesome from what it was to what it is, and the people all happy they are with it. Oh, and they're going to be elated, let me tell you, just from we're halfway through it, and it looks beautiful. Let's focus in on some of the products they selected. Uh, first and foremost, we're standing on a beautiful patio, and the thing that I really like is she didn't run all together. There's a couple different design elements. I notice it looks like a kind of a modified herringbone pattern with different size pavers, but then a piece of artwork here. Instead of running it all together, you actually put a border around some pretty interesting stone-like material. Exactly. You can have your main patio area and you can frame it with another product and then with like a Belgard Arbel on the inside to give a stone look. So you can totally change up the look for a bigger area. It just kind of divides up in different sections. Well, I'm a big fan of patios and whether it's a color stamped concrete or a paver because I think you have more design options with the pavers. But one of the knocks against pavers is eventually the plants are going to grow up through it. Uh, can you do anything about that? Are they going to have to worry about that? I hear it on every job when I go look at a brick paver patio people are looking at. Years ago, you used to use sand. Mm -hmm. Now there's a polymeric sand that's basically a flexible mortar. It's installed after it's watered in. It gets down in the crevices in the brick and that does not allow ants or weeds to pop through. So polymeric sand has alleviated that concern for a homeowner. You bet. They're not going to have to worry about it. Does it kind of lock in place, yet it remains flexible enough so in a freeze thaw that we get around here? That's correct. It's a flexible mortar. As it gets moist, it resets itself. And the good thing about it is if you have to remove a certain section for some reason or another for construction or something, you can go in and take it out repolymeric it and you're good to go. Wow, I love to learn stuff like that. I already yeah. learned something on the show. Um, let's move down to the walls because I know the base, especially in a wall, is very important. Let's learn you more bet. about Sounds that. Sounds good. Stay tuned. We'll continue following this landscaping project and check out a beautiful brick fire pit next. In our last segment, we learned how a landscape design is formulated and also how professional designers are moving from two-dimensional paper designs to 3D movies to help homeowners visualize their new landscape design. Now let's meet back up with project manager Kurt Zimple as we continue our tour of this outdoor living area being installed by Kittleson Landscape. Whether it's patio or a retaining wall, your base is where it all starts and the most important part of the patio or wall. And when we talk about base, it looks like we're talking about stone. I mean, a lot of people might not understand the importance of, of getting a proper base because you think clay. Clay gets rock hard. It's like concrete. How can that ever fail? But in rain, it could. Right. That's correct. So you get with the three quarter inch gravel fines that we use for a base, basically you're doing two inch increments and locking it in tight. With clay, it'll seem really hard when you get moisture. It'll actually settle and move with frost, it'll heave. Yeah, I think we've, we've all seen those failing patios or failing rock walls. And Correct. I'd say nine times out of 10, if not 10 out of 10, it's because they didn't have a proper base. Every site that we're on, we do a base for what it needs there. If you have a heavy clay base, we're gonna use more gravel with fines. Really, and so ultimately in a project like this, you're coming in, you're excavating out, and then you're gonna put in whatever fits the situation. And in this, I can see what you did, not only as a base, which I assume was very similar, but also behind the rock wall, and I assume that's for drainage? That's correct. Behind the retaining wall, we use three quarter inch clear gravel, so you don't have the fines in it. That allows for water to drain through and escape through the wall so that you don't have constant pressure on the retaining wall. Whereas if you had fines, and again, fines are that, fine 
particulate matter that can lock all that gravel together. Correct. If you have fines in it, it's going to block the drainage is what you're saying. That is correct. The other key to that is keeping the water drainage away from the retaining wall and around it. Try to keep it up and keep the water away from it. The thing I really like about this retaining wall is the perfect radius around here. You see rectangular square blocks. You don't realize, a lot of people don't realize you can create a curve with it. You guys did it second to none. I mean, this is beautiful. Yeah, it is nice. A lot of people think with a straight block, you have to go straight walls. You can do really nice radiuses with good strength in them. You know, this product is actually a three piece product, so you can get some different linear effects in it. And again, that's showing the experience of all the different products out there because maybe somebody doesn't like this particular pattern but there's many different patterns out there that can end up with the same end result that's correct there's basically a block for everyone sure again your yeah. imagination is your only limitation let's go over and talk about that fire pit that we passed on the way down on the patio sounds good all right Stu. here's something that we've had almost incorporated in every project we've done this year you know just a grow pit area i love it and when i look at this I love the integrated grill itself into the fire. Is this removable? Yes, and you basically just lift it up, pops oh, right out. Oh, so it can, I don't want to take it off, it's rather heavy, but you could take it off if you just wanted to be roasting marshmallows exactly. or something, but yet it's a functional grill. You're correct. And why not? Again, a beautiful setting like this with all these views. It really is like you're out in the wilderness, yet you're only a few feet from your home. Yeah, with a beautiful view, why not? You know? And you know, I look around and at first I was like, well, where are they gonna sit? But these are sitting walls, aren't they? Correct. You can have it either way if you're having just kind of a small, really quiet night. You have enough room to, you know, incorporate some chairs here. But if you do have a little bit more of a fire, you know, sit back. Sit back and yet there's still enough room for people to walk by Correct. safely. And what I like, not only from, again, a curvilinear pattern here, very inviting, but you tied in that element of art. I said it was a frame piece of artwork up on the patio, the same stone pattern down here. You're right. Yeah, it's nice to incorporate from one area, put it to the other. And this kind of naturalizes this area around a grill pit. You know, one thing we haven't talked about is lighting. And if you want to use this area at night, you want it to be safe. Can you incorporate lighting into a landscape like this? Yeah, and the best way to do it, you know, you have up lights, down lights, you know, you don't want to glow the whole area. You just want to have some accent lights, like right here in the pillar. Oh, below cool. the cap. Basically that faces down, shoots the light out, doesn't get in anybody's eyes. And it's gonna really accent the beautiful rock wall there, but also provide functionality so at night you can see the steps and it adds an element of safety to yep. it. Yeah, you'll be able to see the staircase and you can incorporate, some people do along like the sitting wall under here, just to give a nice down light. Again, it's so important when you're renovating your landscape design to talk to someone who's experienced to shed light on the ideas. You might not want them underneath there, but then again, you might want to at least be aware of the different options that are out there. How long until you guys are done? Uh, it's going to be the beginning of this next week. Just some well, little things to get finished up. I bet they're going to use it even more than they anticipate. I appreciate you coming on and walking us through it. You bet. Stick around, we'll be going on a lakefront landscape tour next when we continue with today's Home Remodeler. Earlier in today's program, we learned about landscape design and about some of the key installation elements for a successful landscaping project. We also toured a new outdoor living space that included the ever popular fire pit along with a multi-level brick patio. Now let's catch back up with Craig Kittleson and check out some lakeshore landscapes to review what's possible and what's permitted when landscaping along a lakefront here in southern Wisconsin. Oh Craig, what a spectacular view from this Lake Mendota setting. I can see why you brought us out to this landscape design. This is beautiful. Thanks Stu. This is really a fun project. It was a challenge, but it was a very fun project. How old is it? This project's like six years old now. Wow, you can see it's starting to mature. It's beautiful. I love, you know, how you tied it into the lakeshore. You have some riprap down there. At first glance, I see all the endemic rock here that you use, the limestone. Yeah, these are actually native in Wisconsin. We get these out of a quarry locally here. So, and same with a lot of plants. The plants, there's some native plants in here. We've actually used some other selections so we get a lot of nice color with the grasses and the flowers. And I bet it's year-round color because, you know, this is late summer. I see the black-eyed Susans are in bloom, the Russian sage. The nice grass, I'm a big fan of grass and it just looks beautiful. And I love how you did it in multi-tier versus just a big rock wall. 
you have three different ones here and it's almost inviting leading you up the landscape design. I love the stairs themselves, but I like the view that you see as you walk up here. And we've tried to turn and curve things so it looks nice, but also we're utilizing the space as well as we possibly can. I really like the, the different curves you put in here. Concave down here, convex up there. Softens the landscape design, even though it's the hardscape aspect. It really does. If you look at all the angles on the house, it really does soften the house. So up here, what were you trying to accomplish? Just kind of a seating area? Because again, it's a beautiful view looking out. Yep, you've got a place to sit. It's actually holding up this patio. And again, it, there's a lot of height there. So what we're trying to do is kind of terrace our way up to the final finished spot up here. I like that. So it wasn't only for aesthetics, but functionality as well. These are actually a retaining wall for the patio up above. Yep, got some nice natural looking steps over on the side over there as well. Well, pretty spectacular on the lake side. Did you carry this theme throughout? Throughout the whole rest of the property, it looks beautiful. Well, it's apparent to me why we came out here. It's a great example of what you can do with a little foresight on a lakefront property with a steep bank. You said you had one more property you wanted to show us? Not too far away, let's go take a look. Oh, Craig, another beautiful location on the lake. We are really fortunate here in the Madison area to have all these beautiful natural resources, aren't we? Yeah, we've got four lakes just right around us. And taking care of them and making sure they're not destroyed, that's probably a big part of your company's job when somebody calls you to put in a landscape. These lakes are so precious, and that's my specialty here, is to take care of the lakes when we're doing a project. You know, the last one is pretty complex on that hillside. This one right here looks like you're taking care of some erosion problems. Yeah, this one actually posed a little bit different challenge than the last job. It was low, so what was happening is when we had those floods back three or four years ago, we had water was actually saturating the lawn up here and it was actually depositing back into the lake. Wow, so when I look at this, yeah, you're only probably 16, 18 inches above the level just to the top of the rocks here. These lakes are down quite a bit. This year we haven't had all that much rain, but in the past you're saying it went all the way up towards the house? Yeah, normally we'd be probably standing in water right now, so yeah. So the solution that you provided here not only saves his yard, but it also protects our lakes because that's a lot of sediment that was probably going in there. And like I said before, the lakes are so precious here. We've tried to do what we can do and be stewards to try keep that soil from getting into the lakes because that's one of our main problems we have in these lakes. And you know, we've talked in the past, I know you and I, about the rules and regulations. There's the wetland zoning, the different entities you have to work through, but they're there, the DNR is there to protect the lakes, aren't they? You know, the DNR does care about our lakes and they're giving us the tools to be able to do this. This is something that we do all the time. We make it as seamless as possible. This part's DNR, so we work within their guidelines to help put this riprap in. We also work with Dane County and some of the other local municipalities to work on the upper parts of the lawns. Anywhere where you're on shoreland zoning, there is some extra permits that are needed. Do you have to plan these projects out? And that's a good case in point of why you want to work with an experienced contractor who knows all the channels to follow. Because after all, one of these projects, whether again, it's as complex as the one we saw earlier or more mainstream like this one where you're helping to solve an erosion problem, you still need to follow all the rules, regulations, the guidelines set forth by those entities. Yes, and like I say, it's just like planning a landscape. It's a few things you gotta do, but once it's all taken care of, you're ready to go. Well, Craig, all the projects we visited today were great examples in their own right of showing the benefit of working with a professional landscape contractor. I appreciate you coming on, spending some time, and giving us some insight to the process. My pleasure. Now here are some key points to help summarize today's show. A quality remodeling job always begins with a good plan, so be sure to select a company for your landscaping project that has the tools and the expertise to provide a design that can help you visualize your new landscape before they even begin the project. Next, the best landscaping products may become the worst if they're not properly installed. Using the right base materials and quality craftsmanship are also both required to ensure performance and beauty in your new landscape. And finally, if you live along a lake and are considering landscaping along your lakeshore, be sure to work with an experienced contractor who is familiar with all the state and local requirements. 
Well, we're all out of time for this week's show. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next time on today's Home Remodeler. For more information about today's topic and upcoming episodes of today's Home Remodeler, please visit these websites. The preceding program was sponsored by the Today's Home Remodeler Television Network.